Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles Sona. Welcome, you guys, to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, the topic is, was Charles Barkley right about the Clippers? So that's the topic I want to get into in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to ensure that you receive our videos whenever they come out. Also, check out our Dreamers Pro Max. It's an online sports community, a community we created, a place where you can go and you know chat live during game start basketball discussions and so many other cool things so if you guys are interested in that be sure to check that out check that out we have that linked in the description below also make sure you go ahead and click the join button to join the channel to receive loyalty badges and also to ensure that whenever you leave a comment on the channel it's responded to and whenever we go live we can see your comments and respond to that so make sure you go ahead and click the join button next to the subscribe button anyway let me get into this topic here so I want to talk about Charles Barkley today because he usually gives some interesting takes whenever he talks. And also, uh, we've done some videos in the past about him that some of you guys have enjoyed. So I said, hey, why not? It's uh, let's let's give it a shot today. So Charles Barkley, for those of you guys, for those of you who don't know, some people that just see him on TV and they think, oh, he's a very funny, outspoken from a basketball player. But Charles Barkley is one of the top 50 um, basketball players of all time. He's a very, very he was a very, very good basketball player for a career he averaged 22 points 11 rebounds and four assists for his career okay he won the regular season mvp award in 1993 he's 11 time he's an 11 time all-star he's been an all-star game mvp he's been on what 11 all nba teams five first five second all nba teams uh he led the league in rebounding in 1988 he went to the finals he played against michael jordan that's where he lost charles barkley is he was a he was a hell of a player and he was an undersized power forward right he was just he had a lot of natural strength he was six foot six and he weighed 250 pounds at his playing weight he was he was just he was just another one of these freak athletes sort of similar to uh dennis rodman dennis rodman for what I've heard, I didn't see a lot of tape from him, especially in his younger years, but I watched some videos on him when he was playing against Shaq, defending Shaq. He was, he was one of these freak type of athletes, man, just like very strong, strong as a bull, very competitive, gritty. Charles Barkley would get up in your face. And, um, you know, there's a lot of great kind of he has a lot of great war stories in the NBA. He was also part of that that dream team. So Charles Barkley is a very accomplished basketball player. And we all know this. Right. That's why he's respected. Regardless of what people think about him, he's respected as a basketball player. Now, he's also probably the most outspoken man in sports, to be honest with you. You have the big personalities like uh, Stephen A. Smith. You have Skip Bayless. You have Shannon Sharp. You have Max Kellerman. You have Nick Wright. You have Colin Cowherd. Uh, you, uh, you you have Marcellus Wiley. But of all of them, you have uh, you know Kenny Smith. You have Shaquille O'Neal. But at at the top of that list is Charles Barkley. No one is as out. No one is as outspoken as Charles Barkley. And Charles Barkley calls out a lot of his media uh, his media contemporaries. He calls them out. Sometimes he takes sublim subliminal shots. I believe as Stephen A. Smith. Charles Barkley says exactly what he thinks. He doesn't sugarcoat what he thinks. He doesn't kind of. He doesn't like to buff. He, he doesn't like to give you criticisms with a buffer. For example, if you listen to Stephen A. Smith before he ever says what he thinks or he wants to criticize somebody he always says you're a great player one of the greater da, da. he always feels like he has to say that to give this kind of respect charles barkley just goes at you another person who does that uh is skip bayless skip bayless really doesn't care he just says exactly what he thinks right but charles barkley i'll put him at the top of that list as far as being the most um outspoken person and he has a history of saying things where he goes against the grain he has no problem with going you know but being the only one the only man on an island when he believes something for example we did a video not too long ago where we were talking about the mvp voting and the incongruity of the of how we how we in the media decide to pick and choose who's going to be the mvp how we know who the mvp is going to be in the beginning of the season without any games being played and the phoenix suns were having a very good record in the number two team in the western conference right now and charles barkley says hold up he said hold up a minute how is it possible that we're talking about regular season MVPs and, you know, this guy, we're mentioning LeBron, we're mentioning Joel Embiid, we're mentioning, uh, you know, whoever it is, Nikola Jokic. How is it that Chris Paul isn't getting brought up in this debate, in, in this debate? I mentioned Donovan Mitchell, but we're not going to talk about Donovan Mitchell, right? But he, I was like, he was like, why don't we talk about him? Why don't we talk about Chris Paul? He said last year, this team didn't even make the playoffs. Excuse me. They didn't even make the playoffs. You airdrop him on this team. They all of a sudden go from a team. They didn't make the playoffs, so they won all of the eight, all eight um, of the playing games. I'm not the playing game, all eight of the bubble games in the Orlando bubble, and now all of a sudden they're the number two seed in the Western Conference. And how is it possible that this guy's not being mentioned as the leader, as a floor general? Let's see, how is he not being mentioned? How can he be not being one of the being a consideration? And Shaquille O'Neal, 
was like, no, you can't put him in a consider because he's not the best player. He's not putting up the best. And he called out the hypocrisy of, uh, of Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny Smith. He's like, hold up a minute, Shaq, wait a minute. When Steve Nash won those two five, when, when he, Steve Nash won those MVPs, he wasn't the best player in the league. Are you telling me that Steve Nash was the best player in the league? And then Shaq was like, oh, hmm, interesting. You got a point. Hmm, interesting. Right? And it's, it's Charles Barkley, had he not said that, most people wouldn't have thought about it. Right? So he's that type of guy that usually says stuff like that. And um, that's how he is. But now I want to talk about Charles Barkley and the Clippers because I've heard him say various things on this team. Last year, you'll remember uh, when the Clippers were playing against the Denver Nuggets in the second round, he was picking the Clippers, right? He was like, the Clippers are going to win, and then they lost. And then uh, they were up 3-1, they were going to win, and they lost. And they won the next going to win. And I guarantee, you know how it goes, I guarantee that they're going to win the next game. I think this was the game seven uh, in which they blew. They blew that lead, right? So Charles Barkley has been on the side of the Clippers in the past, at least to my not to the best of my knowledge. That's what I, that, that's what I remember. However, this year, I think they were playing a game against the Phoenix Suns and the Clippers were down at halftime and I think it was at halftime Charles Bar yes it was at halftime Charles Barkley came out and said uh they asked him they said are the Clippers contenders and he goes no they're pretenders right he's like they're pretend pretenders I don't believe in them I don't I don't think they're going to go any far they're going to go anywhere and this and this and this and this now unfortunately I don't have the audio of that however I have the audio of the post game after they won because he spoke to Paul George because the Clippers came back and won that game and he said some nice things about them. And then at the end, some people in Clipper Nation, some fans said, I can't believe that Charles Barkley just called the Clippers pretenders. So here's what Charles Barkley had to say to what those people were saying on Twitter on the internet. So take a listen to Charles Barkley kind of doubling down on what he thought. Take a listen to that. Charles Barkley really said the Clippers weren't contenders. Well, let me tell you something, Manuel. I've been poor. I've been rich. I've been fat. I've been skinny. I've been old. I've been in the Hall of Fame. And one thing I can always tell you, the Clippers have always sucked. <laughs> and then, hey, oh, yeah. Clippers, yeah, Clippers, you heard what I said. Yeah. Yeah, I've been Clippers fat, down. skinny, pole, rich, old, Hall of Fame. Here we go, Clippers. Here we go. Here we go, Clippers. Clipper Nation, rise up. We'll be right back. Got your back, Daryl. Now, in there, he was basically saying that for all his life, the Clippers have been bad and this and this and this and this, right? He basically said what he thought. And it was funny, right? Because he usually, when he says things, they're, um, they're, 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 they're usually very, very funny. Now, basically, I think what Charles Barkley is saying is basically what most people are saying. Most people are saying that the Clippers, no matter what they do this season, they're, they're going to hold on to what happened last year. Right. And because of that, they're going to get, you know, you know, disrespected to an extent. He has a point because on one hand, he's like, listen, I was rooting for you guys last year. You went into the playoffs. You stunk up the joint. We all know what happened. You're up three one and you blew that three one lead. Right. So this time around, he's looking at the team. He's probably looking at them at that time in the season. They weren't they weren't very consistent. And to be fair, when he said that the Clippers were not as good uh, as they are now back then. So I can kind of, I could kind of understand that. However, I feel like he's saying something a lot of people said, which is basically, we've seen this movie before. I think last year, the Clippers finished with the number two seed in the Western conference, if I'm not mistaken. But my only issue is we can't live in the past, right? We can't live in the, We can't pick and choose who we're going to kind of hold on to things to and say, okay, this guy, look what he did last year. But then this for others, it's a clean slate, right? If that was the case, you know, um, some players could never win a regular season MVP because everybody's not going to have a fantastic season. You know, I say, well, he's just because this guy's playing well this year, he didn't play well last year, so I can't give him the regular season MVP award because we we, were, we already saw this before. That's not fair, right? You can't you can't you can't live in the past and and and, and penalize teams for what they did in the past. And I give you a, uh, an example of this why this is this is this uh, this is proved true. This season, no one has really spoken talking about any Clipper to be mentioned as far as in the regular season MVP voting. I never said Kawhi Leonard should be mentioned, should should have won, win the MVP. He's my favorite player in the league right now. I never said he should win the MVP. I said at various points in the season, why was he not being mentioned early in the season? Why why wasn't anybody discussing him? Now, I mean, I think about a few days ago they mentioned Paul George. Paul George is not going to win the MVP. Even if the Clippers run the run the, run the scoreboard and win all the all the games that they have in front of them, Paul George is not going to win the MVP. Right. So there's some people already have it in their minds that they decided that, listen, this is what we feel about this team. No matter what happens, because of what we saw in the past, we're going to hold that against the team. That's just the way it seems to be right now. I've heard some people say some very foolish things, right, to the point where, it's, OK, you know, none of this doesn't matter. You know, none of this doesn't matter. Well, 
what do you mean by that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in terms of what they're going to do in the playoffs, but we're not in the playoffs. And as you're saying, none of this matters. You're kind of scrubbing away what guys are accomplishing in the regular season. As I said before, I'll say it again. When people, when players make it on all NBA teams, uh, you know, MVP, when, when they become MVP, defensive player of the year, all of these different things, these things happen in the regular season. You can't discount the regular season when a lot of these guys are getting a super max contract and all this for how they perform in the regular season. Go look at the CBA. Look at the th look at the stipulations and what qualifies players to, to become super max players. Go look at the collective bargaining agreement. So you can't say it doesn't matter. It absolutely does matter. Right. It literally matters. Right. That's how these guys, depending on how they perform in the regular season, that's what determines how much money they're going to. So how come it doesn't matter then? I get what some people are saying, but I think some people are taking it too far. Like one oaf came on the channel recently and said probably probably the top five most ignorant things I probably heard this year or probably in the last year in sports. Guy goes or person goes, uh, the only reason the Clippers are shooting such a high percentage is because nobody in the NBA takes them seriously. And nobody guards them. And that's the reason why they're shooting a high percentage. And the guy was so stupid. He didn't even realize what he was saying. So according to you, if nobody took them serious, taking them seriously, nobody's playing defense on them. Wouldn't they win every single game? If nobody's taking this team seriously, wouldn't they win every single game? They should, according to that logic, because logic, nobody's going to guard you. Nobody's going to take you seriously, right? You're just going to win every single game, right? Obviously, that just shows you some of the things that people... Now, obviously, this is an extreme example of flagrant stupidity, but I'm just giving you an example of how people are holding things against this team for what happened last year. So does Charles Barkley have a point? I guess we have to wait and see, right? I, I think none of this goes away until they win the championship. I don't think even getting to the Western Conference Finals is enough, or even getting get into the finals. They need to win a championship. Paul George is not going to get his name cleared until he wins a title. That's the only way Paul George can get rid of the pandemic P and all of this different stuff. When he wins a champ, when he wins a championship, then he's going to be free from all of this ridicule. Until then, expect it to come. Clipper Nation, this is what's going to happen until the Clippers break through. So, what I want to know from you guys is, do you think what Charles Barkley is saying, it, what what Charles Barkley said is fair, or unfair? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to make sure. You go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day. Catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.